Hi, I'm Aaron Stash and welcome to the Electric Home Show. One of the perks of the job is that we get to squeeze into some really tight spaces here. So Mike Gunderson and I are going to get cozy. I'm Aaron Stash. Welcome to the Electric Home Show. We're back with Mike Gunderson from Compass Heating and Air and really wanted to take a look at this dual fuel system. So our show is the electric home show, so this doesn't right. necessarily work for what I'm looking for, Correct. but this probably is gonna work for a lot more people maybe. So tell us why Correct. this system. It gives you a choice, and, and, and a big one is a choice of which fuel do you wanna use, right? A couple years ago, gas prices were very high. We were at like $1.24 during the summer. By the time we got into February, March, it was 84, 87 cents. Still much higher than our normal gas prices. Mm -hmm. Uh, a bad year, it's usually 68, 69 cents when the whole country is cold and just consuming a lot of gas per therm. Um, a lot of people would have benefited. Uh, us in particular, it was February a year and a half ago, uh, two years ago now, I guess, being that we're in February. Uh, uh, but uh, our bill for running the heat pump was $118 to heat our house for the entire month. Our neighbors were over 350 for running just running gas. So you're running roughly $120 to run the heat pump heat in on electrical yep. in the month of February, two Correct. years ago, and yep. the neighbor's house that's just running a gas furnace is three hundred dollars. It was yeah, it was over three hundred and fifty dollars because gas prices were so high. Sure, sure. Yep. yep. So it gives you a choice. You know, if gas prices are high, you can do that. If electric prices are high, you can run uh, your furnace. Um, it's really a, a preference. I'm Aaron Stash. Thanks for watching the Electric Home Show. If you're a homeowner interested in a healthy, energy efficient electric home, reach out to us at electrichomecompany.com to schedule your free virtual coffee today. Thanks for watching. So this system is, uh, the house was built in 89 and uh, had a gas furnace already. It was not a high efficiency furnace, but it was a gas furnace. Uh, when we moved in, we put a gas furnace with the heat pump. The idea you know, was, hey, I'm going to put solar on the house. so. I want to have a heat pump and be able to choose if I want to run that and have it have the ability to run in very cold weather. And so that's maybe a big concern folks have with going mm -hmm. all electric is right. technology is still catching up. It still works or it can start to work at lower temperatures. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest drawbacks is when you're negative five, negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. your electric only heat pump system is not going to run as efficiently. Right. As it would in 45 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. That's correct. Yeah. So uh, the heat pumps, they work fantastic. They're very, very comfortable. There's nothing more comfortable than a variable speed heat pump. Uh, this is a modulating gas furnace. So as far as furnaces are concerned, it's the most comfortable item you can get. The heat pumps do work very, very well. They do lose efficiency as it gets colder, you know, especially when it starts getting down to 17 and below, you'll stop, you'll drop some there. Uh, many of the units out now between Daikin and Mitsubishi, they all have systems that'll work at, you know, even five below zero, it'd be 100% of their capacity. And now the new systems coming out with the A2L refrigerants are actually uh, going to be able to go much lower than that, down into negative 32 on some of them, uh, as far as operation. 100% capacity, uh, the most I've seen is at negative five is 100%. So um, it's nice to have the comfort. A lot of people like the gas furnaces and it, it, it's, it's like a, a blanket, right? So, does, so this is, it, it has a gas system mm -hmm. in it, so it's dual fuel. Right. Where in this system is the heat pump section? Uh, so the coil here, just like your air conditioner, you know, the, I think the best way to describe a heat pump is a two-way AC. During the cooling season, the coil gets cold. That absorbs the heat out of the house. During the heating season, that same unit, it will reverse, essentially. You, you kind of look at it, it reverses the refrigerant flow. Now this coil gets very warm. Um, when I say warm, it's, it's hot. Uh, the air blows across that, and so your colder air in the house is uh, is uh, absorbing the heat off that coil, and therefore having warm air come out of the the registers in your floor or your ceiling. And if someone has a dual fuel system like this, mm -hmm. how do they know where to set it? Do I set it at 15 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Fahrenheit, or is there a, a sweet spot there? So that really depends on the customer and what they're looking for. So if you want to do it based on how much money it's costing you. For electric versus gas, that's where you would make the determination as to temperatures and when am I losing efficiency? What so, is what? How much is it costing to operate that system? I think what I've uh, run into with some folks I know is 
their installers, not you, but right. their installers have set the changeover temperature at like 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep. Like, why do you think that is? Because they're not confident in the equipment that they put in. They can definitely go much lower than 50. That is a comfort or, or a confidence thing with that contractor. Okay. I'm Aaron Stash with the Electric Home Show here with Mike Gunderson. Now would be a great time to like and subscribe to the channel for more great content. Um, so Mike, we're looking at this dual fuel system mm -hmm. and you were just saying that in an electric only system, the electric resistance, basically a toaster oven inside of your air handler, yeah. can run at the same time as the heat pump. Right. But in a dual fuel system, you really get either or. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, the reason for that is because the, of the position of the heat that you're generating, right? A heat pump moves heat from one area to another, inside or outside. Um, and then when you're generating heat from a gas furnace or electric heat strips, uh, I get you, you can't use that heat and go across the coil. That is part of your heat pump. So electric, uh, they put the on an air handler that's electric, not dual fuel. The electric heat strips are above the coil. Mm -hmm where in this case, the coil is above the furnace on a dual fuel, so I can't run the heat and have refrigerant flowing through the coil. Got it, and with a system like this, maybe one mm -hmm. of the, the challenges of swapping in a heat pump system in a retrofit or a mm -hmm. remodel, or it's February 14th and my furnace just broke down and it's gonna be negative five degrees next week, yeah. that's probably not a good time to choose to go to a heat pump. Tell me about, mm -hmm this system can i just swap this in for my existing gas furnace you could yes yeah, so you could put the furnace in and then uh you know if you don't have a heat pump whatever you have the furnace is compatible with any system yes but the heat pump side do i need additional power usage for it like if i've already got an air conditioner and a furnace right can i put this dual fuel system in do i need to do any additional electrical you no typically you don't uh and actually the the amp draws are going down from what they used to be as well. So with the new refrigerators coming out, it'll be a much lower amp draw than what your current air conditioner is. So that would be a great opportunity for folks that want to switch into a system that aren't ready to add additional electrical capacity, or maybe they have to do a panel upgrade. Mm -hmm. This would be a good system to save a lot of energy, use a lot less gas, but still have a backup, but right. also not changing out a different electrical system adding a bunch of breakers and panels and things like that. Is that fair? That exactly. Yes. So if I'm looking at changing into a dual fuel system, let's say this summer, my air conditioner goes out, mm -hmm. that would actually be a really good time to change into a dual fuel system. Even though I'm right. just replacing my air conditioner, it may be time to replace that furnace. So I could do both of these at once. Is that a fair assessment? Yep, it sure is. And if you have a, an existing furnace, that's not that old, there are options that we can do to add a heat pump to that system as well. You so don't you, have to necessarily do them together. Okay, so you can bolt a heat pump system. I say bolt, I don't know exactly how you're <laughs> right. doing it, but you're putting yeah. a heat pump system on top of an existing furnace. So right. if I just replaced my furnace a couple of years ago and I'm not ready to go all electric, yep. I could still put a heat pump system on to be both my air conditioner and my heating Correct. Even though I have a gas furnace. That's right. Yep. And you'll wind up getting, like I say, six to eight months of operation if you want out of those heat pumps. And and there's a lot of rebates and tax credits that are available for many of the systems as well. So it's definitely beneficial. Uh, a lot of the benefit we've gotten from the tax credits and rebates, which have increased from our utilities, uh, is it makes the cost of a heat pump very similar to the same model of air conditioner only. So you're getting more bang for your buck, so to speak. Um, and it's, it, it, again, the comfort of a heat pump is unmatched by any furnace, so, yeah. yeah. All right, Mike, so it's Hi. cold out here in February 2025 in the Chicago suburbs, yep. and we're looking at your Daikin system. Tell us a little Correct. bit about what's going on here. Okay, well, this is the Daikin VRV Life heat pump system, and uh, we were able to see downstairs the furnace, and then the coil above the furnace is what is part of the VRV that attaches to with this guy here. That's what it's connected to. Uh, and this heat pump is set to run, uh, rated at five below zero, um, but it does run much colder than that. It's just, that's the rating that they give it. So I've, I've physically had it running at 18 below zero that I've seen it, um, but it is dual fuel. So our gas furnace switches over 
at the lowest temperature of minus five. So and this is the, your air conditioner and your heater. That's correct. And this has a multi-head system, right? So you have yeah. both ducted and ductless inside, is that right? That's correct, off of the one unit. Off of this unit can do up to uh, nine zones, depending on which, which model you have and what kind of indoor units you have and sizes. So we have a coil in, on the furnace and then we have a ductless wall unit up in that room. And with your dual fuel system, again, you can change where you want it to turn on right and where do you typically set that uh typically so the, the this past year i moved it to 20. our gas rates have been extremely low this year so um but it's a it's like a week worth of runtime you know we don't get that much weather that's below 20 degrees yeah here the last few years so but you can optimize it for right power savings in terms mm -hmm. of energy efficiency or cost savings correct yep yeah if it's a nice sunny day and i want to run your uh, heat pump I'll run the heat pump and uh, take advantage of the, the nice sunny day on the solar as well. And do you install a lot of these for your clients? Like uh, if somebody do. wants to do a dual fuel system, are you gonna recommend this Daikin so, unit today? Correct, yes. Most of the units we're putting in are Daikin with dual fuel. Uh, the Daikin Fit is our most popular. Uh, that does have a switch over we're finding between 24 and 28 degrees outside temperature, uh, but they are extremely popular and get you a majority of the year you're able to run that even in the winter time it'll run during the day on most days uh the vrv uh is a little more of it a little more expensive of the system uh and therefore it, it's not as popular but people who are looking for very cold temperature operation it is the way to go excellent well thank you so much mike we're mm -hmm. going to come back when it's not freezing out here <laughs> so that we can take a look at some of yeah. those peppers and the uh the ducks flying over yep all, all right thank you over there I'm Aaron Stash. Thanks for watching The Electric Home Show. Like and subscribe for more. If you're an industry professional interested in joining our network, reach out to us at electrichomecompany.com. Thanks for watching.